What is happening all you mentees? This is the Uncanny Omar from Near Min Condition. And today, well, today I'm gonna answer a question that I get asked a lot, especially from newcomers to the Collected Editions game. So hopefully I'll be able to answer it with this video. So let's get started. And welcome back everybody. Now, this is a question I get asked quite often by not just newcomers to Collected Editions, but just people in general. What the difference is between a Deluxe Edition? Why Marvel or DC did not decide to call a book an omnibus and why they decided to call it just an OHC? So OHC, first of all, is the term that I use a lot. Uh, it just literally stands for Oversized Hardcover. And that's what we're looking at here. So. Let's go ahead and do this. The easiest distinction between both of these, of course, uh, besides the size, the thickness of War of the Realms, is of course the uh, label up there, the logo Marvel Omnibus, whereas this one here is just Marvel. Now, let's look at DC. Here we have James Tinian's Detective Comics run. Uh, one of them is collected in this Omnibus format right here with the label Omnibus, and the other one in the Deluxe edition that's what when dc revamped their rebirth line that's what the oversized hardcovers were known as back then as the deluxe editions and actually they've kind of stuck with that name so whenever you see a hardcover you see me announce a hardcover and, and i say uh deluxe edition then you know it's just as tall as an omnibus and that gets easily confusing with books like this when you see hc or hardcover on them and the price of this being $30, you expect it to be a deluxe edition, but no. You see the difference here in the height? So this is a standard size hardcover. And what that means is this is the size of a trade paperback or a comic book. It's just that it has a hardboard on it. Quite a big difference. This has oversized artwork, both the omnibus and the oversized hardcover. And the standard edition hardcover has standard edition size art. So as I mentioned, the size of a comic book. Now I've done a video on different collected editions and if you wanna go click on that, it's on the link above. But really, this is the exact same dimensions as this. It's just that this has some room separating the ribbon from the board itself in the top and at the bottom. But other than that, these are identical. Even though I've already showed this on the video of the overview of the Rise and Fall of Batman, just wanted to showcase that all of this is collected in here. So all four of these deluxe editions are collected in this one omnibus. One of the reasons why I double dip, triple dip sometimes, and I'll be doing a separate video about that. So if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please think about subscribing. Why I double dip, triple dip, quadruple dip, it gets ridiculous, or why I upgrade. But I did want to showcase the differences in the thickness. Of course, these have their own individual hardcovers and that adds to that thickness, whereas this just has the cover and the back cover. So let's go back to Marvel for a second, because this is where I get a lot of questions about this particular book. Now, Thor, God of Thunder, this is by Jason Aaron. No Omnibus has been announced yet. This has been released as a trade paperback, as a standard size hardcover, and as an oversized hardcover. So sometimes people link me to the standard size hardcover and say, is this the book that you show on your videos? And I always have to say, no, make sure to look at the page count and the dimensions of this book. Because I always like to remind people the OHCs have different dimensions than standard size hardcovers. Now Marvel has made it easier uh, in the recent years because they don't do standard size hardcovers. With the exception are the Marvel Masterworks and the Marvel Select Edition. These are the only two hardcovers that Marvel puts out that are in standard size. Of course the Marvel Masterworks line has been around since the 80s and it's regarded as the top tier cream of the crop as far as collected editions go. But that has made it easier because now there's no confusion uh, when an oversized hardcover comes out, if it's actually oversized or if it's a standard edition hardcover. And I don't have very many Marvel Premiere hardcovers left because I've upgraded them to epics or just to thick, uh, complete collections. But here is what they look like. Again, standard size hardcovers, but that's what the Marvel Premiere line was known as. So one of the things I see online, mostly on eBay, are sellers trying to sell these oversized hardcovers and just call them omnibus. For example, I've seen eBay posts uh, trying to sell Civil War as an omnibus, calling it the Civil War omnibus, but there never has been a Civil War omnibus. They've just come out in oversized hardcovers. Another difference between the OHC and the omnibus editions is that most of the time they will reprint an omnibus, whether that's Marvel or DC. They hardly ever reprint and OHC. 
in the rare cases that they do, it's usually when a movie is tied to it, like Captain America Civil War. Uh, however, Immortal Hulk 1 has ha also had a new printing. So I've talked about how Omnis mainly have a direct market cover, and that's mainly for Marvel. DC really doesn't do direct market only covers. So it is limited, it's got a smaller print run, and the only difference is just the dust jacket. So that's another question I get asked often, what are the differences, and really it's just the dust jacket. And that was another difference between an oversized hardcover and an omnibus, that oversized hardcovers never really got direct market covers. But that recently changed, as in the case of Always an Invader. What we're looking at here is the direct market cover. To your right is the standard edition cover. So they have started changing that. Now we're getting variants of those. Again, the direct market covers being a smaller print run and the standard edition covers available everywhere at Amazon, comic book stores, and Barnes and Noble. Now, of course, with thickness comes the price. An omnibus is usually anywhere from $100 to $150, whereas an OHC is anywhere from $20.99 to $34.99. I think there's some that have been $49.99, but most of the time that's around that price range because they are a lot slimmer in content. So why make something an omnibus and one thing an oversized hardcover? Well, the biggest thing is that an omnibus, of course, is always thicker. This is the Mutant Massacre. Now, this is the omnibus edition. There was an OHC that collected about a third of this. This collects everything, all the issues of X Factor, all the issues of Uncanny X-Men, the New Mutants, Thor, Power Pack, and then this is Secret Wars. So, of course, this is a lot thinner because this is just the eight-issue limited series. Whereas this is the entire crossover spanning over 30 issues and even collecting the preludes and the, some of the aftermath. So, that's another big reason. All right, cool, Omar, I get it. Big, thick books, big events, always an omnibus. Smaller, thinner books, smaller events, and OHC. Easy enough to follow. Unless... We're talking about big oversized hardcovers, like the case of The Wedding of Cyclops and Phoenix, retailing for $125 and having 842 pages. So that's where I always like to chime in and say, well, why isn't this an omnibus? Why did they make something thin like Electra by Frank Miller and Bill Sienkiewicz an omnibus? And as you can see, it is an omnibus. And here we go. And the way that I like to explain this is, hey, we got an extra oversized hardcover collection of X-Men. Maybe it was the loophole that they're only allowed to have so many omnibus a year, and this is a way to get an extra story in oversized thick format. I'm not complaining. I'm really not that OCD about having the Marvel Omnibus logo. If they are to reprint this, yes, absolutely. Put that Marvel Omnibus logo up there and I'd be happy. I think it's just the way to get an extra book out there collected. That was always my reasoning. I don't have the exact answer. I don't speak for Marvel uh, nor DC when they do this, but that's just what I think. Because we have seen thinner Omnis before, like the case of Elektra with 400 pages and Devil Dinosaur with 176 pages. And it's adorable how they put the Marvel logo like this instead of what we're used to seeing on this omnibus. And sometimes the OHCs are bigger than an omnibus, such as the case of this Infinity Wars, which is the follow-up to Guardians of the Galaxy, where Duggan's Guardians of the Galaxy wraps up. But this OHC has 592 pages, while the omnibus has 408 and considered an omnibus, and this one considered an OHC. But we all know better, especially when we're buying these. That's why I do comprehensive reading orders to let you know where to put your deluxe editions together. And along these lines, one of the other big questions I get is why would anybody get an oversized hardcover when they can get an omnibus? Well, really it's preference because these are the 300 bullet oversized hardcovers. This is the 100 bullets omnibus. This here retails for $150. Each one of these deluxe editions is $50 and all three of these make up this one big fat omnibus now and it's really all based on preference some people love reading or handling books that are a lot slimmer than having to carry around or read a big clunky book with over 1400 pages sometimes honestly yeah not shaming anybody i love reading in any kind of format whether it's trade paperback epic collection deluxe hardcover whatever it is as long as it's available physically and then of course some people love trade paperbacks so what it really comes down to is preference and then sometimes it's cheaper to get the ohcs unless they go out of print as we've seen in the case of 100 bullets or fables 
there's no omnibus for fables but the fables deluxe editions when they go out of print they get ridiculous um and then when an omnibus is announced those prices sometimes go down and i say sometimes because i think some of these are still a little up there and not only preference but also availability both of these deluxe hardcovers right here have never been available in omnibus format we have sweet tooth to the right and house of m sweet tooth is getting a compendium which is a soft cover standard size big thick book collecting the entire series and house of m is still only available in trade paperback as well as an oversized hardcover no sign of an omnibus yet but i'd love to see that one day now when using the word omnibus this is the size that we're talking about when we are talking about marvel and dc other publishers have started adding the word omnibus through their collected editions and well most of the time they're soft cover formats and obviously they are not the dimensions that the omnis are as you can tell and both of these collections do have the title omnibus on them and here they both are compared to an epic collection which is a standard size trade paperback even some manga have gotten into the game of putting omnibus down um, as far as collected editions and obviously this is nowhere near the size of a real omnibus so to stress the point again as long as it's dc or marvel this is the dimensions you're going to get with other publishers you got to make sure to look at the description of the book so it can get confusing when other publishers write the word omnibus you just have to keep looking at the description to make sure that it is a hardcover and also look at the dimensions if the dimensions look identical to the dimensions of a marvel or a dc omnibus then you're going to be good. But that's it. I hope I was able to clarify some of these questions that I had as far as what an OHC is, what a deluxe edition is, what an oversized hardcover is, and comparing them to an omnibus. If you have any more questions, please leave them in the comments down below. But that, as they say, is that. Most of these books are available from our sponsor, CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online source for collected editions up to 50% off retail price. Cheap Graphic Novels prides itself on excellent packaging, so your stuff gets to you in excellent condition, and they have amazing customer service. Check out their bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. And for all you minties that are watching, if you're a first-time customer, don't forget to mention that Near Mint Condition sent you their way for a promotional credit on free shipping on your next order. Now, this is only for U.S customers. CheapGraphicNovels.com, your source for the hottest books with deep discounts, customer service, and excellent shipping that will keep you coming back for more. And that's pretty much it. That is my definition of what the difference between an oversized hardcover and an omnibus is. And honestly, the answer is sometimes it just really depends on who is putting the collection together. So keep that in mind and always double check that page count. That's the best thing you can do in the description. Again, this was the Uncanny Omar. Please don't forget to hit that like, subscribe button, ring that bell for notifications to let you know when our videos are going live. We can be found on Redbubble and on Patreon. Amazing ways to support the channel and thank you to our existing patrons. You all make videos like this possible. More importantly, please everybody stay healthy, stay safe.